new videos every day. Hi, I'm Anna Miller, founder and CEO of The Depression Project, and I'm joined by Karen Beth Bonds. And we are continuing the series of Mad Wisdom Dialogues. And in this particular segment, we're going to address the question of, so you're dropping the depression. What is beyond the experience of depression? Yes? Yes. I am so curious because I have no <laughs> idea. <laughs> well, let's see where we can take this particular piece. Okay. So in thinking about my own experience and where... I've been and I am cured and have been for 10 years. And when I say cured, I'm talking no meds, no therapy, living what by all accounts is a successful life. Happy marriage. I've adopted my daughter, run successful businesses, so on and so forth, do, doing my thing out in the world. What I would say is beyond depression, the place that I would start with that is to say it's something called radical response ability, as you like to say it, which is rather than me being responsible in a very upstanding moralistic view of that word, more I'm able to become responsive to my environment and to my world in a much different way. To move beyond depression required that I drop that identity, which was not necessarily an easy thing to do. Yes. You know, dropping any identity that we have for any period of time uh, people experience this when they go through divorce, um, loss of loss of a loved one through death. There's an identity shift that's going on for us as we lose those pieces of us. So losing depression is no different. When I uh, wrote the book Madness, Mania, and Miracles, it actually has a tagline name to it, which is "Meet Yourself in the Middle." So my short answer to what's beyond depression is you actually get to meet yourself. Wow. So how do you like yourself? <laughs> yeah, you know, now I like myself pretty good. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't start out that way. I had a lot of um, unhappiness about the choices I'd made in my life. A lot of, well, I certainly consider myself um, broken in some way coming out of the mental health system with this diagnosis. I was somehow incomplete and broken. And so first, that was one of the things that I needed to to let it fall away so that I could actually come forward. And I'd say learning to, my, learning to like myself was really part of the journey. And coming out of alcoholism where I was numb, I can remember actually having wine and reading self-help books. <laughs> I mean, it's really kind of interesting. Not reading them very focused, but after a while. Um, but I still wanted to become a better person. Yeah, that is interesting. Yeah. What does that mean to be a better person? I don't know anymore. It's become a situation where can I just love myself as I am in this moment? Yeah. In this very moment. And what I've noticed when you're, when you're labeled and being an alcoholic, uh, labeled alcoholic, plus having a character or personality disorder, you have labels that you become victimized to. Literally, uh, because I would have somebody in my family who would say, you can't have a drink. You're an alcoholic. Well, excuse me. I'm also somebody who can make a decision if I'm going to have a drink or not. Yeah. And so it becomes a, a, a living identity of the label. And what's beyond alcoholism? What's beyond the label for bipolar? It's, it's a very interesting conversation. Yeah, and I think one of the key messages that, that I'd like to give the viewers is is a whole big wide world. There's way more to it than um, any identification with any label, you know. Uh, I recently went through another transformation of identity with uh, the birth of my daughter. Mm -hmm. You know, prior to her birth, I was very much, uh, my career was my thing. And getting to spend time with her and see her Wow, that first year, she's now 16 months, and the first year was, who am I if I'm not my work? So the point I want to make about that and in, in drawing that experience is that we can get beyond whatever it is that's going on for us, and there's always something else beyond where we've been. The question is, is are we willing to be open and curious about this journey of life, or are we so concerned with what I like to call trying to life-proof our life 
and secure ourselves from having anything bad happen to us, that we get distracted with control and management mechanisms for this journey. Which limits our experience yeah. because we are so concerned about making a preference for the good rather than the what we would call the bad. And what if we just loved what is? That's it. We loved this moment exactly as it is without putting a right wrong or a good bad on it. Not an easy thing. Not an easy thing. Not an easy thing at all. A pretty radical way to approach life from being on, you know, the other side of bipolar and depression, being in that experience. It's very it's designed to give you the experience of being a complete victim. Absolutely. And so what we're what we're talking about here is absolutely shedding the victim piece, absolutely shedding uh, really childish ways of being in relationship to the world and growing up, which is something that unfortunately not very many of us do until much later on in life. We're not really kind of doing it as we age. We're just because we're in our 20s or 30s doesn't necessarily mean, or even 40s or 50s or 60s for that matter, necessarily mean that we've grown up at all. We may have aged, but in terms of having a mature relationship with our environment and this experience of life, that's another dimension and piece to the puzzle. Absolutely. So growing up, what does it take to grow up? Thoughts well, about that? Well, I have to tell you that I'm still in process. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> and for me, it is another, it's not making the difference um, between right, wrong, good, or bad. Can I be angry and be okay with myself? Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. May I be sad and be okay with myself? Why is happiness, that we call happiness, a better feeling? I have to make that up in my mind. I have to make up a story about it, that this is better than this. And I'm thinking, and I'm making this up too, it's a story, that my soul, because that's how I believe today, that my soul is just experiencing. And if it's all God, hey, it's all good. Or You're not. You're here for the you're here for the ride. I'm here for the ride, and Jim McKenna says it, and you you know the human amusement park. Yeah, I yeah, love that. that. And that the universe is really a playful puppy. Yes, it's kind yeah. of a fun fun way of looking at that. And then the other part of it is is that the the truth is I am. Yeah, that's living through this avatar, this body. I, I am. So really the question is, you know, in answering the question, what's beyond depression, uh, something to look at is, and it's really only for you if the experience you're having now is, is no longer enough, if you're looking to go further and do something else. But this whole process of growing up that we're talking about, um, getting past the victim identity, th these are, they sound very nice as we talk about them and the actual process of going through those things is pretty tough. You know, meeting yourself on your own terms probably for the first time ever because what you what you were up into the point was a collection of of beliefs and ideals that were given to you by society and and reexamining those and deciding for yourself what serves me and what doesn't and what am I really doing here and what do I really want to do with my own life? Those are big questions that affect people that have had an experience of depression or not. Um, certainly, since, since the experience of depression is so agonizing, it would seem to me that it might be worthwhile to go further and actually begin to, to unpack some of the things that got you there and see where else you'd like to go. Uh, not for everyone. Doesn't have to happen. No, it does not. Uh, I do wonder if people that end up cycling for years and years, if... It's a piece that they're not looking at that's worth looking at. Yes. And I don't have an answer, obviously. I have an answer for myself. And learning to be my own authority is very challenging because I want to be validated. I want someone to tell me that they agree with me. And so when they don't, then I'm challenged. Yeah, absolutely. And that's a challenge for everyone. Yes. Uh, and you can find out more information about this through the Depression Project and contacting myself or Karen Beth Gluns in terms of this conversation of getting beyond depression. Thank you for joining us. Yes, thank you. If you liked this video, we have hundreds of more alternative videos 
ranging from sexual health to psychology to mind control. So if you liked it, go ahead and click on me to enter the Psyche Truth channel.